Um, we'll move on to item number four, which is announcements and presentations. Um, first item, donate new or gently used coats for adults and children now through November the 1st. Uh, this is thank you to Recology for helping to keep San Bruno families warm this winter. Donations um, can be um, dropped off at San Bruno City Hall, San Bruno Library, Delta Creek Condominium Association, and San Bruno Intro Real Estate, which is located at 180 El Camino Real. And so this is a program that has been ongoing, and even through last year in COVID times, we appreciate uh, them taking care of that as well. Item B. Receive presentation from Peninsula Humane Society and SPCA on animal control services provided to our city and throughout San Mateo County. And we have just seen um, the, the president of the Peninsula Humane Society and the SPCA. Uh, very happy to have you here and welcome. And thank you for, uh, I think you're still at the office, so thank you for uh, uh, staying with us. And I will thank now you. please turn it over to you. Great, thank you. It's, it's very nice to be with you. and. I uh, appreciate the invitation to uh, speak with you uh, tonight. Um, I have a presentation. I'm going to share my screen here. And I think you all can see that. Hopefully you can see that. Are you able to uh, see my screen? Yeah, that's good. You are great. OK. Um, well, what I thought I would do is just spend a couple of minutes in talking about um, uh, myself and PHS at um, a, a high level and then sort of talk about the services that we uh, provide uh, to the county and to uh, the cities in the county. Um, so I am uh, approaching my first year here, November 1st will be my first year. I had gray hair before I came into the into the job, so just to... <laughs> <laughs> assure you that I didn't gain gray hair uh, in the last year coming here. Um, but, you know, I, I grew up uh, with a father who loved animals and we had all, I'd lived in the country near the Blue Ridge Mountains and we had all kinds of animals uh, growing up and I escaped uh, to the Rocky Mountains to college and back to the South, the uh, Wake Forest for law school. Um, never practiced law, but it's a great education to have. Uh, for anything that you do later in life. Uh, but I've spent the bulk of my career in nonprofits and foundations. Um, and that is in the last 15 years working uh, as a consultant with uh, nonprofit organizations. And so when the board um, asked me to consider thinking about this uh, uh, role, they said, we want someone who understands how uh, organizations work. We've got plenty of experts, and I have to agree with that, uh, in the organizations uh, around animal welfare and taking care of cats and dogs and other animals, uh, but we need someone who uh, understands how to run an organization. So um, I have come into this uh, organization as a steward. Uh, I didn't come in here to, to change. I came to uh, respect what we do and to hopefully enhance um, what uh, we do here. Um, so one of the first things I did when I came to PHS was uh, to look through the uh, historical archives. And we go back to 1950. Um, and I read every article that was written uh, about PHS and the work uh, that PHS has done over the years. And we are deeply rooted in this community. Um, the, the old building, I'm sure that some of you um, went into that building or passed by the old building at Coyote Point before the new one was built. That was built in 1952. It was state of the art in 1952. But uh, over the 65 or so years that it was uh, standing, it, it had become uh, fairly unusable uh, for our services. And so we're grateful to have a new building, a relatively new building that we moved into in March of uh, 2020. So we are the local uh, organization that takes care of all the animals in this uh, in this community. And so I say that we are the uh, community's partner um, in uh, caring for the animals that, that come into uh, our shelter. 
three locations, Coyote Point Shelter, and I would invite all of you um, to come. Uh, if you would like a tour, let me know. We'd be happy to host you and show you uh, this, this building. The Tom and Atlanto Center, where I am uh, here in Burlingame, and we have our resale shop, uh, Pick of the Litter, in downtown uh, Burlingame. Also encourage you to uh, go by and spend a few dollars <laughs> pick of the litter when you have a chance. So we spent, um, uh, soon after I came in, uh, the RFP for the contract was issued and I spent the first uh, three or four months in this role working with my team here in uh, the county and a number of city managers, including city manager uh, Grogan uh, on developing a new uh, uh, contract. And what I have on this slide in there are, I can send you more details, but I wanted to highlight the areas that um, we get the most calls uh, about, and particularly in priority um, one, um, where there's an aggressive dog that um, is threatening a person or another uh, animal, uh, either domestic or wild animal. Um, we often get requests, uh, calls from public safety agencies um, to provide uh, immediate assistance. Um, and if they're involved in a, in a situation and there's an animal in the home or in, in the place that's uh, in that situation as well, we will respond immediately. Um, if there's a dog that has bitten another animal or another human, um, there's been some sort of injury uh, to uh, the animal, uh, we'll respond uh, within an hour. Um, and then <clears throat> we get a number of calls about rescues of uh, domestic and, and wild animals. Um, and the final uh, point here, uh, which I believe talking to the city manager that um, we've gotten some uh, uh, calls from your from San Bruno regarding mountain lions, and so we work in coordination with uh, the, the public safety officer or officers who are on scene um, and fish and wildlife uh, to to capture um, the wild animal um, if it's uh, threat threatening to someone. Um, so th th those are the, the the priorities that we. Uh, spent a great deal of time working through, uh, <clears throat> getting clear uh, where the, the need was, and uh, we, we will respond within an hour to, to all of those. And then there are four other priorities, as you can see on this slide. Uh, in priority two, we'll respond within four hours to a sick domestic or wild animal um, uh, or an animal that's been confined. Uh, uh, to, to the home or in some other place and priority three, um, the longer period of time up to 18 hours uh, to respond to animals that are uh, running at large. They're not confined. They're not, they're just out running around the, in the street. Um, or if there's a dead animal that we get a number of calls about, um, or if there are animal bite quarantines where the, the animal has been uh, or needs to be uh, quarantined after there's been a report of a, of a bite. Um, and then within 24 hours, uh, if there are stray uh, uh, dogs that will come out and, and, and patrol the area um, to, in, in search of the, the stray animal. Um, and if an animal is being relinquished, someone calls us and says that they want to give up the animal will go and pick up the animal and bring the animal back to the shelter. Um, and then if there are no other, um, if there are no uh, calls in the preceding priorities, then our officers will patrol the city parks uh, and neighborhoods. Are there any questions about any of those? I, I just sort of ran through them rather, rather quickly. Um, or if you don't mind going through the entire presentation and then we'll take uh, questions from uh... My colleagues, thank you. Terrific, okay. And then in addition to um, the uh, services that are provided under the, the uh, pr previous priorities, um, we have services that 
are provided through the shelter. Um, we are open uh, every day of the year, 24 hours a day. Um, and so we will have people come in at all hours of the day or night. Um, and uh, uh, they, they picked up a lost or abandoned animal and bring them in. Um, and so we, we will have staff there to receive those animals. Um, the shelter is, is open um, at, at times when we believe people are able to, to make it um, th during the lunch hour or right after work. So 11 to 7, 11 to 6 on the weekends. Um, and we uh, try to accommodate as many people as we can um, uh, through the shelter. Um, the, uh, we also have animal care technicians who are uh, there 24 hours uh, every day of the week uh, to make sure that the animals are cared for. Um, animals can't take care of, the, take care of themselves, you know? so they need someone to, uh, or people to, to look after them, to feed them, to clean up after them. So um, we do that uh, around the clock. Uh, and then we have a team of veterinarians um, that provide uh, medical care to animals that often come in to us that are um, uh, sick or injured. Um, and so they provide immediate care. Um, lost and found uh, information, we provide uh, information uh, over the phone, internet in person uh, to people who report uh, that their pet has been um, uh, lost um, and then we uh, provide sheltering for animals that uh, who's um, that are in protective custody. If if there's a a family that's involved in domestic violence or there's been a, an accusation of abuse of of the animal, um, we will take that animal in while um, the legal system, the criminal justice system, works its way. Um, through. Um, and then we issue cat and dog licenses, licenses for uh, the city and we collect those fees uh, and uh, send them on to the county, excuse me. Um, and we provide euthanasia uh, services. Uh, we often have uh, people who call us and say that their animal uh, has reached the point where um, they're either too sick or, or too old um, and uh, to live on and they want to uh, uh, euthanize the, the animal and we will we will do that for a very small fee um, and then we also have uh, vaccination clinics um, for uh, the residents of the county um, one of the the areas that we get involved in every year when there are disasters we are called upon uh, by the county to help assist uh, in those disasters and so we have volunteers and we have staff who are trained up um, and we have trailers that uh, we outfit um, and when we're called we can, we're able to call up our volunteers and staff at a moment's notice and we go respond uh, and then every year the county has a disaster preparedness training that we participate in uh, as well in addition to these uh, the services provided under the uh, animal services agreement i wanted to just highlight uh, some of the, the services that our donors provide uh, that complement uh, the services through the contract. So we have humane investigators. We conduct hundreds of investigations um, uh, throughout the year, and um, often uh, many of those are forwarded on to the district attorney's office for prosecution. Um, here at the Lanco Center, we have a team of adoption counselors, and this is where uh, adoptions uh, are take place. Um, our spay and neuter clinic, um, which is solely privately funded, is located in the Coyote Point shelter, uh, and we provide spay and neuter surgeries there. Um, we have here a wildlife care center. Um, we have thousands of, of animals that are brought in uh, by uh, citizens who see an injured squirrel or an injured bird, and they bring them in, and we um, uh, take care of those. Um, and we have over 1,200 volunteers who help us get uh, the work done. We couldn't make it without the volunteers who come from throughout the county. Um, and uh, they, uh, many of them come in to Coyote Point, 
to, to work here at the Lanto Center uh, at the uh, pick of the litter, and some are fosters. Uh, they foster dogs and, and cats in their, in their home. Um, we also provide humane education. We run uh, a number of, of camps during the summer. This year, this, this past summer, we ran six or eight, I believe, in person. We went back to in-person camps uh, for uh, 10 to 12 young kids uh, per uh, camp. Um, and it provides an opportunity for them to learn all about caring for animals. And so we have staff who bring in their pets, volunteers who bring in their pets and talk about um, their, their animals. And we have dog training classes here at Lantos. Um, we have an animal behavior staff. They um, answer questions uh, by phone, online. Uh, we have a class going on right now uh, downstairs. Uh, so several nights a week, we provide uh, training classes for owners. And one of the, the programs that um, I was recently introduced to, uh, the TAILS program in partnership with the Sheriff's Department, um, where we provide uh, dogs to the Sheriff's Department um, and the uh, inmates will care for them for a period of eight weeks and they train them. And our staff go in once a week and uh, train the um, inmates uh, and how to deal with certain behavior uh, issues. And we have a graduation at the, the end of that time. The sheriff is extremely uh, proud of this program. And um, we had a graduation a few weeks ago and uh, we this week sent over uh, four new dogs to the jail uh, to be cared for by the inmates. So that is the, uh, that, that's PHS in a nutshell. Um, and I will say, I didn't put my phone number or email on here, but uh, I am available to you at any time that you have questions. Um, feel free to give me a call. Uh, the main number here is 340-7022. I'm at extension 309. So I'd be happy to uh, take your call anytime. So thank you, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much for taking the time and for being here. And I appreciate the update and presentation. Are there any questions from my colleagues at this time? Council Member Hamilton. So uh, no questions, just a, a couple of comments. I just wanna say thank you for the presentation and for the, the critical work that you and the, your organization do for our city and for our county. Um, I visited the, the Lanto Center on Rollins Road many, many times with my kids. Uh, we adopted our cat from there. We took a dog training class there. We brought injured birds into the wildlife care center. I encourage everybody watching to please pay a visit and take advantage of the, the many services we've heard about tonight, especially if you're considering adopting a pet. So thank you very, very much. Thank you, Councilman. Any other uh, questions from colleagues? Okay, with that, um, please, again, thank you for being here. Thank you for your time. And please uh, go home and relax. <laughs> thank you. I hope you all have a good night. I have my, my little Zoe uh, in the corner here. She's not awake. I was hoping that I could introduce her to, to you all, but maybe some other time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you once again. Appreciate it. With that, we'll move on to um, our next presentation which is a received a presentation on the city's new agenda management system. And for that, we're going to turn it over to our city clerk. Yes, thank you, mayor and city council. My name is Melissa Thurman. I am your city clerk. And um, I wanted to introduce this item. In 2019, early 2019, I began looking into agenda management solutions for the city. We currently have um, none. We basically take a Word document and I convert it to a PDF and then I pack it all together and it takes quite a while, but I've gotten really good at it. Um, but still, it's not something that is really efficient and it takes a lot of time to put a packet together, especially if they're over a thousand pages. Um, and so we, I was trying to find ways that will help expedite the process for the city and for future clerks and for future employees so that everybody's not having to stay at their desk and work on a Word document. 
And so um, I had several demos with agenda management companies and um, the IT staff that was with me, Paul Vela, and at the time, Steve Messick, who reviewed these demos, by far, we all agreed that PrimeGov was the best solution. And I re reached out to Joshua Herney, and he is going to be presenting for us tonight. But just for just under $16,000, we were able to find a really great solution for the city. PrimeGov has been fantastic. I've been working with them weekly since 2020, mid, I don't even remember now, it's been a while on building us a great platform. And we are now at the final stage where November 9th, we will be producing an agenda for the first time using this agenda management system. And Mr. Herney is going to explain to you tonight what the public can expect to see on our website moving forward. The cleaned up version that they will present to us as far as our agendas and also um, our committees and boards and commissions and the streamlining that we will have with um, applying to serve on those. So Joshua, take it away. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, thank you, council. Really honored to be here. I, I live over in Alameda, so practically an, a neighbor to, uh, uh, you know, native to the Bay Area. Just really quick uh, introduction about PrimeGov. So PrimeGov, uh, while we are a relatively new company, about six years old, uh, our management team actually did this at another company before. And so we really have uh, the most experience in the industry. So more than uh, 20 plus years experience. And, you know, we uh, have a number of clients in, you know, our, our strongest client base is really in California. Uh, we have quite a few clients here in the Bay Area, San Mateo and in the peninsula in particular. So the city of San Mateo, Santa Clara County, uh, Atherton recently signed up with us. And so really excited to have San Bruno. And essentially what we've done is we've created a one-stop shop for the public to find both information about your meetings such as agendas, videos, that sort of thing, but then also about uh, committees, committee members, and I'm gonna show you that here in just one second. The idea behind this really, and Melissa's really been a champion with this, also she's president of the California Clerks Association, so really uh, I'd like to give my hats off to Melissa because she's really a leader in this area, is not only making the uh, information available to the public, but making it available to them in, in an easy to find way and then increasing accessibility. And so I'm gonna show you uh, some of that here. So as I had mentioned, all of your information now or will be uh, as of early next month will be available in one place. And so for example, if a member of the public was interested in a board or a commission, they could come in and they could read the a profile of, of the committee. They could click here and find out information, uh, who the members are. This allows them to uh, comply with the MADI Act and all this can, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes to automate this process for you, but it does make compliance with uh, things like the Brown Act and the MADI Act much easier. If uh, there are any, they can then look to see if there are any vacancies on this meeting if there is a vacancy, they can just go ahead and click this apply button and it's going to open an online application. Currently people have to fill out a paper application and scan it or drop it off. And so this is one example of making the committees, the boards and committees more accessible, especially to uh, different demographics who may be more uh, focused on you know, web uh, interactions and that sort of thing. So they could come in, they could fill out this information. Some of the uh, nice features are they can just type in their name and it will add their signature. They can also just upload a resume, so things like that to make it really easy for people to apply to the various boards and commissions. And then if they, before applying, if they wanted to see what had happened at the most recent meeting, they could just click on this tab and then they would pull up the meeting. Now, uh, as Melissa mentioned, we're, Still in the process of rolling this out, but we will migrate all your data over. So just to give you a local example of someone who's been using the system longer, 
I'm going to pull up the city of San Mateo. And so uh, you can see here, uh, they have data going back to 2019. Uh, we have uh, other clients, we bring data over uh, much, much longer than that. But essentially, if you look here, um, it's basically organized. Uh, so you would have your upcoming meetings. You also have the ability to do a search here. So if I wanted to do a search on Uber, for example, it would bring up not only where that is on the agenda, but also any attachments. So it does a full text search. This just makes it much easier for the public to find information, can dramatically cut down on public information requests and other things like that. So it, it just, um, in speaking to clerks over the nine years that I've been doing this, uh, it really just creates a better uh, sense from the public that the, you know, I know you guys don't feel this way, but sometimes certain communities may feel like council is trying to hide things and just giving that access to them in a much easier way uh, just just kind of uh, counters any any of those kinds of ideas. Uh, the other thing to show here is you would have the video for the meeting. And so if I was going to, here's another example of a, a local city, city of Albany, if I click here, it's going to bring up the video. And, and as the meeting is going, you can, the members of the public can scroll along on the agenda and see the video right here. And so that makes it really nice. This could be during a live or they can come in and see the archives. Afterwards, you'll notice that we use YouTube. I know that's a small local company uh, for you. And so uh, we really leverage that relationship there. And a couple other things to show that I think are pretty great. So we also have this integration with Google Translate. And what this allows you to do is essentially translate the agenda into 104 different language languages automatically. Now, of course, I'm going to translate this into Korean. Of course, it's not 100% perfect, but I think it does a lot in terms of opening up accessibility to different different uh, populations. And then one last feature that I wanted to show, uh, because of our integration with YouTube, we also have the ability to timestamp. And what that will allow people to do is basically jump around. So you can see uh, if I click this button here, it jumps to, um, let's see. I had this sitting up here for a while. I probably should have hit refresh first. But it will jump basically to this point in the video. So if I scroll down to another point and hit that button here, let me just hit refresh. So you can see here, if I click in on this button here, it's going to go ahead and jump to an hour and 35 minutes into the meeting. And this makes it so people can easily find the information that they're looking for, um, as opposed to having to scroll through, um, which as someone with young children, being able to access information or attending meetings and kind of logging in at the right time is, you know, just opens up a lot of doors for me. And so that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover today. Happy to answer any questions. Um, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And thank you uh, for your presentation and uh, questions from colleagues. Uh, Vice Mayor Medina. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, more, it's actually a, a comment. I uh, just wanted to uh, thank our city clerk. Uh, we, this has been a long time. Uh, I, I understand she's been working on this and it's great to see it finally here. And, and this, this product looks fantastic. So. Uh, I look forward to supporting this. Thank you. Um, I think it's already been supported. <laughs> it's here. Um, yeah. Council Member Mason. Yeah, I just wanted to thank the city clerk as well. Um, years ago, I put PDFs for books, and it is painful. And thank you for doing it all these years. And I'm sure you're really excited about this. So I, I do, definitely don't want to prolong your excitement and you know your time. Um, I did just have one um, quick question, which is I love the look back. And so I'm just curious, is the look back period just starting when we start the program or is there a look back period that is going to go beyond um, the, you know, the initiation date of the this new program? Yeah, Melissa, can you remind me um, how 
I'm I sorry, the look back, the archived agendas? Is that yeah, bring the okay. The archive, yeah, the archive. Yeah. Is there is it going to uh, start when we, you know, begin using the software program, or is it going to start, um, you know, is it going to have previous meetings? So we are migrating as well. with PrimeGov, we are migrating two years worth of agendas and packets. So um, January 2019 to present day. And then um, just so you all know, we are also at the same time this is happening, we are going, we are undergoing a website conversion to a new vendor there. And so the website vendor will be bringing over, gosh, I think they have the ability to bring over something like 14 years worth of um, data. However, I don't think we have all of that electronically currently. So whatever we have on the web now, we will have the website um, vendor bring over if it doesn't already exist on the prime dev side. So we will at least have two years worth of data um, brought over from prime gov. And then anything extra on our website, the website vendor will produce in December of this year. So very soon. Great. Thank you. And thank you for keeping this item at the top of your list. <laughs> Thanks. I'm not changing it. <laughs> Councilmember Hamilton. So uh, Council Member Mason asked my question, so I'll just be brief and just say this, uh, this absolutely looks fantastic. Um, it's such a huge improvement at, over, over many different pain areas. Um, not, not, not to minimize your pain area of having you put together those huge packets. Um, so just want to say thank you to the, to the whole team. And uh, this looks great. Can't wait for it to launch. Council Member Salazar. So um, just really quick. So I, I know that this is uh, this looks pretty standard on, uh, compared to other agenda management uh, programs I've seen, and in, in that it uh, breaks down the items. Uh, the, the items are created individually, and then we see them broken out here. Uh, but does it have the ability to then also aggregate into what we're used to seeing? Um, because if you wanted to look at, if you wanted to read um, your agenda packet offline. Um, this doesn't really allow you in, in this particular view. So uh, if we wanted to have a version of it that looks more like what we're accustomed to, which is one large packet, does, does the, the uh, software aggregate that way? It looks uh, like we're, we're showing. Okay, so the whole packet is there. Okay. And then in terms of uh, when we bring the uh, history in, um, I, I imagine we'll only have the, the full packet for those and not the, uh, the individual or the um, the timestamp videos, which I think is really a huge plus in terms of uh, going back to to research what's happened. Yeah, so we could bring it over if it had been originally timestamped. We can migrate data over with timestamps, but I don't believe it was currently timestamped. So um, we'd have to have a person actually watch the meeting and, and do the timestamping. Um, okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. It looks great. It looks great. No problem. And yes, and just to for the record, just to answer your question, yes, the the agendas and the packets can be converted to PDF, um, which is where Josh's I, um, cursor is now. Um, you can just click on a little PDF link. It downloads it to your computer, and it opens up just like you would see the packets now or the agendas now. Well, I wanted to. Um, Thank you for uh, Josh for being here and uh, showing us a few steps and people of the community what to expect just around the corner. I do want to thank the city clerk, um, Madam President, because you know this is something when you when you came on board and we hired you was that this was something that you would have experiences in other jurisdictions that you've worked in and that would have efficiency and effectiveness as far as inner getting everything uh, together within the process that currently exists today. And so that's a big step um, for us. And so I appreciate that continued and staff keeping that um, as, a, as a task to complete. And thank you for getting us to the finish line. No problem, thank you. All right, um, with that, let's move on to our next item, please. Receive a presentation and annual report from the Culture and Arts Commission. And this evening, I believe we have our vice chair who will be helping making the presentation. I am bringing her over right now. Thank you. I'm getting a little error here, so I'm just trying to bring her over. I'm also going to bring over staff liaison Tim Wallace. Okay. There she 
refused. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Tobin, um, thank you for being here. And Mr. Wallace, thank you for being here as well. And uh, we're going to turn over the floor uh, to the vice chair to uh, give us the Culture and Arts Commission report. Hi. Evening. Good evening. <clears throat> I'm not the vice chair. I don't know who is, but thank you. I am a <clears throat> long-term member of the culture. <clears throat> Excuse me. There goes my voice. Of the um, Culture and Arts Commission. And good evening, Honorable Mayor and member of the City Council. Of course, you know my name is Melody Tobin. And I'm pleased to present to you the Culture and Arts Commission 2020-2021 Annual Report. This evening's agenda will include the Commission's members, the purpose of the Commission, the Commission's accomplishments for the year, and our goals for the next year. At the end of the presentation, I will be happy to answer any questions you may have. The Culture and Arts Commission currently has six commissioners. Melissa Rolfe is our chair. Pamela Madden is our vice chair. Pamela Gamble, Jean George, Janet Monahan, and of course, myself. I'm always last. Thank you, Mr. Tobin. Um, our city council liaison is Tom Hamilton. And our email address, if you would ever like to contact us, is culture and arts at sanbruno.ca.gov. <clears throat> the commission is responsible for promoting artistic development of the community, preserving San Bruno's diverse cultural heritage, acquiring and maintaining public art, sponsoring programs and events that enhance quality of life, improving the image and character of the community. The commission achieved a number of accomplishments this year. This year, this includes reestablishing the library community art gallery program, sponsoring the library's winter reading and arts program, providing judges for the recreations division holiday, holiday lighting contest, sponsoring movies in the park, and sponsoring a Dia de los Muertos event. Now we'll look at these accomplishments in a little more detail. The Community Art Gallery was reestablished shortly after the library reopened in April this year. New this year is a $250 stipend paid to participating artists. The purpose of this stipend is to encourage more artists to apply. The works you see on this slide are part of the current exhibit. The commission sponsored the library's winter, winter reading and arts program. This was a series of virtual programs to promote arts and literature. The programs included art talks from the San Francisco Museum of Fine Arts. In addition, there was a marionette performance by Frantello Marionette, a traditional dance and music of Mexico performances by Cascada de Flores, a jazz concert by the Dave Rocha Trio, and a take-home collaborative art project of which you're seeing one of the entries on the slide. In December, the commission provided judges for the Recreation Division's Holiday Lighting Contest. The top three homes were selected from a total of 47 entries. The winning entry is the one you see here on the slide. Movies in the Park returned in September after being on hiatus in 2020 due to COVID-19. The four films screened Rhea, The Last Dragon, Wally, -E, Soul, and Frozen 2, I think that was five, averaged 145 attendees. This is the highest number we've had in many years. Just last Wednesday, the commission sponsored Dia de las Muertas event at the Senior Center produced by library staff and community volunteers. 
Library staff have conducted a Dia de los Muertos event at the library for many years. This year, the event was expanded by moving it to the Senior Center and hiring a traditional mariachi band to provide musical entertainment. The commission is very proud to have sponsored this significant cultural event. The commission has a number of goals for 2021-2022. The City Art Fund currently has a balance of $358,164. The commission will sponsor a Recreation Division's Holiday Window Painting Contest downtown. We plan to create a directory of San Bruno cultural and arts organizations. The commission will select a new set of artists to display their work at the library's community art gallery. Once again, the commission will sponsor movies in the park. We intend to sponsor Shakespeare in the park in October, 2022. We also intend to sponsor a children's art project for the community day in the park. And finally, the commission plans to sponsor more cultural events such as Dia de los Muertos, Chinese New Year, and Black History Month. Finally, I want to take a moment to recognize Judy Puccini, who passed away in July. Judy was a culture and arts commissioner since 2018. Her involvement in the Society of West Coast Artists Gallery on San Mateo Avenue brought a professional perspective to the commission. But more importantly, she was a friend to every commissioner and brought a calming influence to each meeting. We have missed her since her passing and will continue to miss her in the future. This concludes our presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you so much, Melody. Appreciate you being You're here welcome. and the presentation. Any You're questions welcome. from my colleagues? Questions? Not seeing any at this, Vice Mayor Medina. I was waiting for the for the comments, Mr. Mayor. So I, I, I pushed that button a little too soon. So I apologize for that. <laughs> just, just a couple comments, but I'll, I'll wait if there's any other questions. I'm going to say there's probably no questions unless I'm, I'm incorrect, Councilmember Mason, and maybe people wish to make comments. Yes on the comments or no on the comments? Councilmember Mason, do you have a question? Okay, comments. Vice Mayor, you're first, and then Councilmember Mason. No, I, I, uh, fantastic. I, I, I love the Dia the, uh, the de los Muertos uh, event. I love that we're expanding uh, to include other cultures. The artwork in the in the library is fantastic. Uh, I, I highly encourage our residents to go check it out. Um, and I just wanted to thank uh, you all for your work. It's it's, it's great. Thank you, Councilmember Mason. Yeah, just the same. I've attended the Via de los Muertos um, for a couple of years now with the family, and I really enjoyed the this last uh, week at the Senior Center. Very well planned. Uh, the library staff was amazing and well organized. We've attended uh, most of the movies in the park. Um, we've just had a, a great time at a number of the events that have been planned. So thank you so much for all the time and the effort. And I really appreciate some of the new ideas that are forth. Uh, I can't wait to see the windows um, during the holidays this next year. So thank you so much. And on behalf of myself and the city council, and you've heard from a couple of uh, all of my colleagues feel Really want to thank you, Melly. I know you've been on and have had a lot of passion um, for this as well, and a, a beautiful tribute to Judy and a great picture uh, to conclude this with, um, with her spirit and and heart and love that she had for the commission as well as for the arts. And I have been around um, in this community like yourself, and can go back to a time where it didn't exist or a funding mechanism didn't exist, and that's thanks to Council Member former Vice Mayor Irene O'Connell. Uh, and then this continues on. So I want to thank everybody on the commission. If you would pass on our thanks and appreciation, and I appreciate you being here with us this evening and, and bringing that forward. Thank you. Good night. Have, have a good rest of your evening. Thank you. You too.
Okay, we will move on to our next item under uh, announcements and presentations. Receive presentation and annual report from the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee. And of course, I know we have uh, Mr. Smith as a staff liaison, and I believe we are going to hear from uh, David Nigel, who is the chair. And I know I've got that right. And so, Mr. Nigel, if you are um, ready to go, I will please turn the meeting over to you, sir. I'm ready to go. And uh, good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of our city council. My name is David Nigel, as you just said, and I'm the chair of the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee. Tonight, I'll be presenting the 2020-2021 uh, BPAC annual report. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, tonight's agenda will begin with the BPAC's current composition and liaisons, followed by BPAC's roles and responsibilities. Then I will go through the significant activities that BPAC has participated in during these past years and conclude my presentation with the areas of future work for 2022. Next slide, please. Um, the committee is comprised of seven members uh, and two staff liaisons. Uh, and I, I'd like to just say uh, we have a fine balance of um, veteran members and three wonderful new members. And you can see them listed uh, on the slide right there. I also would like to say we have a wonderful collegial re uh, relationship with our staff, uh, working with Michael Smith and David Wong is absolutely fantastic and they've helped all of us so, so much. Uh, with, uh, and they are our liaisons. And we also want to thank our uh, city council representative, uh, Michael Salazar, who has attended our meetings and watches us uh, via Zoom. Um, our three new members uh, have already been very active, Paul Rose and Rob and Jules. And um, uh, the committee also has the following uh, subcommittees, safety outreach, public service announcements, and um, events. And I'd like to give a special thanks to uh, Council Member Michael Salazar for serving as our current city council liaison. Next slide, please. The BPAC is a quasi-judiciary body that provides input and advises the city council on matters related to walking and biking in the city. The, the committee is advisory in nature and is its input is considered in evaluating the effectiveness of projects, programs, and policies related to bicycle and pedestrian activities in the city of San Bruno. This feedback is usually in the form of recommendations to the city council uh, or staff. Next slide, please. Before I proceed to present the committee's accomplishments over the past year, I want to pause and acknowledge the significant impact of COVID-19 pandemic, which has had on our uh, outreach efforts. During the pandemic, committee members were unable to perform the uh, type of community outreach we are used to doing. Usually committee members are present at local events, such as the Posey Parade, Community Day in the Park, Children's Day in the Park, Bike to Work Day, and making bicycle safety presentations in local schools. None of this was possible over the last 20 months. So instead of focus, our, instead our focus has been in the effort of educating ourselves using out, outside resources. Taking that into consideration, in November 2020, the fire marshal, our fire marshal, gave a presentation to the committee on the vegetation clearing efforts in Crestmore Canyon. And in January 2021, the committee received presentations from chief of police, uh, our chief of police on pedestrian and cyclist safety. And a representative from commute.org spoke about her organization's efforts to promote walking and biking in the county. 
uh, and just an aside, when Walter Byrd and I were appointed in February 2002, we uh, made a commitment to have a really good relationship with Commute.org, who at that time was based in Bay Hill, and they've since moved to Oyster Point. And we continue to have a very good uh, relationship with them, and they give us all kinds of advice and materials that we give uh, at our information booth at to different activities. The committee is always looking for presenters to educate us on the latest walking and biking efforts that affect our community. Next slide, please. Um, um, the next two items uh, will be something that we're very proud of. Uh, throughout the years, we've produced and created many uh, public service announcements with the cooperation of our staff and especially Miriam Shalit at uh, cable TV. And I'm going to play you our Dutch Reach uh, public service announcement, which was done at the end of 2020. And the Dutch Reach is a method of opening your car door in a manner that allows you to see oncoming cyclists from, from the rear, avoiding a collision. So if we could have that uh, video now. Our, our next video um, has to do with um, having clear sidewalks and placing the garbage totes in the proper place. This was done by uh, Gus Sinks, our vice chair, and Paul Rose and uh, the staff. Our garbage can placement PSA is the most recent PSA effort and was released in September. Our goal is to address the issue of blocked sidewalks, especially for those members of the community who are mobility impaired. And um, this was uh, done in front of Gus Sink's home. And there he is. <laughs> In addition to those that uh, I thanked earlier, we'd also like to recognize Recology for their cooperation in uh, uh, creating this video. Um, another activity was Bike to Wherever Day. And because many folks were working from home during the pandemic, Bike to Work Day uh, 2021 was replaced by Bike to Wherever Day. And San Bruno did not host our usual two stations so uh, that uh, a few members visited the one station that was at the farmer's market in Brisbane. And um, that is uh, one of our brand new uh, committee members. And um, we look forward to hosting our Energizer stations uh, in San Bruno in 2022. And uh, we'd like to thank Walmart one of our big sponsors at the San Bruno BART station and YouTube at the uh, Caltrain station. Next slide, please. 
The city of San Bruno plans to construct a two-way class four cycle track along the east side of Huntington Avenue, extending from San Bruno Avenue to the Centennial Way Trail in South San Francisco, which is currently in the design con concept phase of work. Because the project was identified in the walk and bike plan, a very important document that we follow, the committee receives bi-monthly reports on its development. We are very excited to see this significant project progress from plan to implementation. Next slide, please. Areas of future work. Although our outreach is hampered by the pandemic, and the cancellation of many of our key outreach programs, the committee was still hard at work, and we are looking forward to continued implementation of the walk and bike plan, ex expand community outreach for children and adults, and continuing to support Bike to Work Day and other community events and activities. That concludes uh, our report, and I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Nigel. Very much appreciate your presence and the presentation. Any questions from colleagues? Any other comments or questions? If not, I want to, on behalf of the City Council and myself, um, please, uh, Dave, if you would go back and thank uh, the, the board for their work, their efforts, and all those folks that are on it, really, they, they not just serve on it, they actually do it. And for the video that we saw with Mr. Sinks, uh, he did speak. Uh, we just didn't have the audio, so I don't want folks to think that it was uh, with, with no sound. We just didn't hear it, but I, I've seen it on TV. And then again, I, I just on a side personal note, I have to uh, thank you for all your decades of service to the community. Obviously, I think you're in your going 52, 53 years on Parks and Rec. And so um, very much always have appreciated all of your passion um, and dedication to this community with whatever group you serve with. Thank you for those kind words. I really appreciate it. And I will conv convey to the committee uh, the accolades that you just mentioned. Thank you again, and thanks for your uh, patience. And you and Rose, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. All right. Um, I just want to, it's not on the agenda, but want to just mention one thing I think I'd be remiss I'd ask for it to be on the agenda. And this was just a, a quick uh, on the community cleanup day that was held on Saturday. But they, but still waiting for the finalization of the weights on the paints and electronics. So at the November 9th meeting, there will be a very detailed report on the success. But just as a caveat to it, uh, keep in mind when we did this last time, it was a total of 264 cars. And on this Saturday, and with thanks to no rain during the event, um, we had uh, 439 vehicles that went through uh, that facility. And <clears throat> I think by based on what it's being said, one of the main contributors uh, was the utility notification in English and Spanish that made it contributed to um, that increase. And so we appreciate everybody's patience. And also very much thanks to all the volunteers uh, that stayed longer. And of course it was steady pace with uh, no breaks. So it is appreciated. 